Islam. And uh, uh, about 10 years ago, we conceived of initiating some activities in the applied side of computer science. We set up the School of IT and we took up major initiatives. One was a business incubator to encourage students and others to convert their research into commercial products, so product development kind of thing. And the other was this distance education because we genuinely believe that IIT education style is different from most other universities which are required to teach to a set syllabus, a set examination pattern. We have significant flexibility here. Consequently, the courses here tend to be very state of art. The latest developments in a particular subject are incorporated in our teaching. And we thought, why not we extend the benefit of the courses here to everybody else. Very much the theme of all open universities. YCMU also started the same thing. I remember discussions with Professor Ram and that they, there are so many people here who have been unfortunate enough not to get an opportunity to educate themselves. But they are smart people, they are grown up people. And education is not just higher technical education at MTEC or PhD level, but even 5th standard, 10th standard, history, geography, maths. And by CMO has been doing a fantastic job over so many years. So welcome friends from NASA. Now when we started distance education, there are some challenges because the same teacher is expected to address large number of people who are physically dispersed. We did do that well using satellite technology and now we are also trying on a webcast using high-speed high internet technology. But we said that when you handle subjects which are being taught or lectures which are being listened to by thousands of people, it is quite likely that due to some emergency or the other, some people are not able to actually attend some lectures. Second, if you are conducting a physical lecture on a campus like this and if a student has a problem, the student can come running to the teacher say two days later in the evening or something and ask for clarification. But if students are in Chennai or in Delhi or in Calcutta, they have no such choice. So we looked at the models and we decided that whatever lectures we give, whatever courses we teach, if it is possible to capture all those contents and release them in an easily accessible form to everyone. You would have heard of MIT's Open Courseware project, of which Samir is going to show some uh, contents there. They started it roughly the same time when we started it at IIT Bombay. So there is no way behind the leaders in the world in this. We have gone, in fact, one step further. We have decided that whatever contents we have, we will release them in open source. You might have heard of open source software, such as Linux operating system and such things, but there is an additional open source movement which relates to contents other than software. And that movement is called Creative Commons. Commons is some property which commonly belongs to the whole humanity. And Creative Commons was created to handle the creative contents like art, music, film, etc., etc., over which copyright issues are creating lots of problems for general population to access them. Since we are transmitting these courses live, we naturally have strong audio-visual content capturing mechanism. If we could release these captured contents, which is not just taking the contents, put them on a CD, write a license and release it, because we realize that when we <coughs> capture these contents, they are not in the best form for people to retain their interest in that subject. So, most of you, since you come from the film editing background, you will know that a raw film is just captured shots. cannot be just assembled in some data and released as a good film. To retain attention of people, you have to edit that. The film editing at the mundane level could be editing of a marriage reception, for example, which you have captured. At the best level, these are commercial hybrid films that you see every day and you would be aware of the enormous amount of effort that people put in editing. The difference is that in regular films, the actors, the director, the technicians, etc. are working as a complete unit from start to the end of the release of the film. So, for example, if some scene has not been well shot and even at the editing stage, you complain to the producer or the director that there is some problem, you have the choice of calling that actor back, reshooting a portion, and including it in the 
Unfortunately, in a teaching learning environment, a lecture occurs only once. Once the lecture is given, the teacher disappears, the students disappear, and they are not available very easily. At most, a teacher may be available, but it is difficult. Consequently, the post-production editing of educational contents pose additional challenges. And therefore, the emphasis has to be try and capture things first time right. And that is why there is a huge amount of emphasis in our expectation from our friends behind the camera or from the friends who do the online mixing for the final thing that comes out. Because ideally, once you do that, that should be the final one. You are all familiar with the efforts that are required. Remember this, if you have to post production one hour of lecture, then somebody has to actually go through every second of that one hour once again. And it is not an easy job. Of course it has to be done, but it should be done for different reasons. Namely, for increasing the effectiveness of that. Since we release it in open source, we hope that these contents can be used by people like you saw some of the downloaded films from YouTube. We propose to put, of course, after our courses also on YouTube, but YouTube does not permit large amount of contents to be put. We also want to create contents in different formats. At one extreme would be the highest quality format, which can be used by agencies such as Open University to transmit them on VISA broadcast. We could broadcast them on a TV channel tomorrow, the contents of it. At the lowest level would be simple interactive audio and a small video, which an individual person can view on one's own monitor or something like that. And in between there are various forms. We have been fortunate in that in the last eight years we have done a lot of experiments and we have come up with multiple options and we have decided that we will always release our material in more than one option. In this effort we have been funded by an agency called TIFAC which found this effort to be useful and they funded a project called e-outreach project for a year. We are planning to extend this project starting next year. Uh, for a different purpose, you know engineering colleges are opening practically every day in the country. The last time I had gone to Nase, uh, uh, eight years ago, uh, six years ago on my sabbatical, there were I think three or four colleges. Now there are I think ten or fifteen in the vicinity. In Mumbai at one time there were three colleges, BJTI, I think Sardar Patel and one more. Today I don't know, there are about fifty engineering colleges. Same thing is true about schools, same thing is true about other colleges, so numbers are increasing. And what is lacking in those places is teachers. Teachers are not available. So we have teacher as a crucial resource, critical resource, which is lacking. And that is another reason for us to say that if we capture a good course, which is useful for students across the country, then no matter whether good teachers are available or not available in that particular city or town, they should be able to use this course material to study that subject and learn something. Additionally, if we could use the same technology to teach the teachers on how to use the produced material and also how to create such material in a collaborative fashion. So we have thought of a particular scheme which I thought I will share with you, whereby we will conduct a, a, a workshop for teachers but not for 25 or 30 teachers at a time that we conduct, like this course, for example. We will conduct it for 1,000 teachers at a time. These 1,000 teachers cannot physically assemble here. So they will assemble at 30 or 40 different centers. One could be in Nasik, one could be in Chennai, one could be in Akola, one could be wherever. And engineering college teachers around those centers will come there in a pre-planned manner. We are launching this pilot starting this April. In the month of April, we are conducting a workshop for the coordinators of these 30 centers, not the 1,000 teachers. We will identify coordinators who will work at the respective centers when the workshop is held, and they will provide the classroom environment like this, uh, video environment or VSAT environment like this, and they will also provide laboratories and uh, uh, tutorial sessions and other things. We will conduct a one-week workshop where we will decide not only the logistics, but we will also decide what should be the syllabus. And this is something that all of you should keep in mind, that when you teach a subject at one particular place, it is not taught with the same syllabus at other places. 
The questions asked in the examination and other places are different. One of the reasons why such edited material, even if you release it in open source, people may not use because they will find it, it is not useful. This is IIT syllabus, this is IIT style questions. I am studying in Nagpur and my Nagpur university asks questions in a different style. Syllabus is different. So what is the so what we are doing in the coordinator workshop, we are asking them to come prepared with the syllabi of all the respective universities. And we will frame a subject with syllabus which will encompass all of these syllabi. And we will teach not only in the IIT style, because ultimately the objective is to bring everybody at a higher level like MIT and Stanford, but we will also teach like how it is taught in those colleges. The examination questions that we will have not only will reflect IIT style, but will also reflect the questions which are asked in the respective university exam. Because then the material will be found useful by people. Now all of this material will be collected. After collecting this material, we will train the teachers for two weeks. And then we will ask the teacher the following. We will tell them that look, these lectures which you have listened to and the tutorials that you have attended are now been captured. This is the audio visual record. Now go back to your colleges and work for two more weeks to add some more material. So just like post-production editing you guys are going to do, they are also required to do post-production. Why I am saying this? The post-production editing at one level done by competent professionals like you will reflect the best quality. But at the other extreme level, an ordinary student or a teacher using webcam should be able to capture some useful contents and should be able to add it. I'll give you one example. Take Nasik, since our friends from Nasik are here. I have seen this not only in Nasik, but in Andhra Pradesh, in Tamil Nadu. When first year students come to an engineering college, the lectures are given in English. But the question answers are often done in local language. So if you go to Andhra Pradesh, the fellow will ask questions in Telugu. If you go to Nasik, Nasik is a Marathi question. And the Shikshak is a Marathi question. I problem with them, they are not But in a course where we conduct, we cannot do that. So what we are going to ask these teachers, you go back to your colleges and ask some students to ask questions in webcam. Doesn't matter if they are in Marathi. Answer them in Marathi. Prepare an English transcript. And send the webcam snippet that you have, which we can attach to that link. So consequently, if we give a 30 hour course, the total video length of all these inputs could be as many as 90 hours. Then students in Andhra Pradesh can select only the main course and Telugu additions. Students in uh, Banaras can uh, use this course with Hindi additions, etc. That's a large deal. Besides, we'll run a portal where we'll keep all this material available and so on. In professional education, audio-visual contents are not the only thing. There are text material, there are programs, and most important, there are laboratories. So how do you teach people laboratory where laboratory equipment does not exist? IITs have good laboratories. Can we replicate them? There are some labs like electronic lab where you can create a remote lab. All these experiments and research is going on in, in IIT, in IIT Bombay and many other places. We want to capture the essence of all of this. We made a big proposal to the ministry and ministry has just the other day considered approving a pilot project for about six months where we do this pilot and a long term three year project. When we were planning this, we realized that we will require high quality post production editing resources. Then we went around and we found out that there are no professional courses of the kind which will give the skills which we need. There are people who either learn on their own or something else. As Samir will tell you during the course, I, I as an outsider can see two very important and crucial components of the skills that you require, of the mindset that you require. One is the professional component where the technology, techniques, etc. The other is a creative component. Because we are talking about essentially films and people have to be creative in them. That's the reason why we require producers, directors who can, who can look at comprehensively the whole thing to make it maximally now, we have such people at the senior level, if we have Samir, if we have a friend from Nasik, well, why do we require these additional things elsewhere? That is because we believe, I personally believe, that in a pyramid of people which is participating in any activity, although the people at the top, of course, would be professionally most 
skilled and most experienced. But every person at the leaf level node of the pyramid must also imbibe that philosophy. Suppose I am just a new person doing simple technician work as a cameraman. You will, you will say, what is the advantage in my knowing post-production editing? The advantage is, if I know what are the problems that are going to be faced by my colleagues in post-production editing, I will be careful while I use my camera so that I keep that in. That's the reason we believe that although there are courses like this, we believe that we should design a course of our own which will comprehensively look at everything from the perspective of what I said, creating useful educational content. So it is e-learning content that we want to focus on. There are some special concessions that have to be given. And of course, the conventional tools and technologies and everything else, including the creative part. It is not an easy course. I'm very happy that my colleague Samir came forward to design that course. We actually presented it to the TIFAC and Department of Science and Technology professionals. They liked it. And we said that this entire course will itself be recorded, edited, and released in open source. So tomorrow if some friend from Nasik or some friend from Akola or some more people in CD want to understand this, we don't have to conduct the course again. They can go through rigorously five-day course, six-day course, do the assignments on their own with the help of someone. The name Ecolabia Project signifies that an individual at any place who does not have opportunity to be mentored by experts like you, but still has the Vijayakisha to learn something, has the capacity to do something great, and has the desire to do something great, should be able to do that. Towards that end, we provide this small help in terms of these countries. That is the nutshell effort. And uh, although this course is a very, arranged in a very peculiar fashion, ordinarily we have five, six days of continuous course. But all of you are working professionals and nobody is willing to give you a chutti for six days. I tried to talk to Professor Kannan for CD. My own people in the outreach said, no, that is not possible. Normal work cannot stop because we are conducting classes and everything. And uh, then, of course, our friend Sir Nasik, who Professor Verunkar was very keen that they should come and participate, could not possibly be extended a full one week. So we decided that we will hold it on three different weeks, weekends. And you use the week. So I told Samir that don't leave them alone during the week. Give them enough assignments. So even when they go back to their work, they cannot sleep easily. They must work for a couple of hours every day. Because that is one thing IIT is well known about. In IIT, what is difference between IIT and other places? No difference. Same human beings who study there or who teach there come here to learn and study. The difference is the energy levels. The difference is the energy level, the difference is the commitment level. We don't count holidays, we don't count Sundays, we don't count whatever, nights, day, whatever, whatever. Work is our first commitment and we, we claim that we have a twist with excellence. That means whatever we do, nobody else in the world should be able to do better than us. Of course, we don't always succeed, but that's our ambition. And we work towards that. So our lifestyle is, anybody who comes to IIT, we chew him up completely. If he dies, we leave him alone. If he survives, we give him a degree and then send him to the river. That is the style in which we have worked for 50 years. And I am very proud that if you look at the students, our students who have passed out and gone out and what they have done, you will agree that this training somewhere has been useful, this style of training. So with this passion and with this commitment we work, this is a new experiment. To the best of my knowledge, such a course has not been conducted in the country anyway. This is the first time that we are doing. Please participate with all your energy. Please make all suggestions. Please participate in the assignments as if the success of the whole course depends upon how well you do your assignment. Because all the assignments that you do, all the experience that you so generate will be captured and will become part and parcel of the material that will be released. So don't forget, आपका चेहरा इसमें बाद में देखने वाला है। वो जितना अच्छा दिखे, आपका काम जितना अच्छा दिखे, उतना अच्छा। All the best and thank you very much.